Welcome to the Purim Show. I am here at the Purim United Methodist Church speaking with the parish nurse, Judy Lightowler. Thanks, Judy, for being with us again on the Purim Show. Thank you for having me. Well, you always have wonderful things here to help the congregation as well as the general public, and you've got Heart Health Day coming up again in February. We do, February 12th. This will be our fourth annual event, and we're having uh, um, Dr. Farkas from the Sanford uh, Heart Health Clinic up in Fargo come and speak to us. She's a cardiologist, and she will be uh, our guest speaker this time. We're really excited to have her. Well, what time of the day is that? It'll be from 10 until 12 on a Saturday morning okay. on the 12th. Just, um, we did that because we want people who are working to be able to access the, the uh, program as well. Absolutely. Busy day in Purim that day. Yes, with it is. The, it's Chocolate Saturday, so that would be a great way to start your, start your day in Purim. If you're from out of town and you have visitors, the, you, you know, you want to come have a shopping day too, start here. 10 to 12, very, very nice time. And, and, and a lunch is served. We will oh. be serving uh, a heart-healthy lunch, which will be uh, like a soup and, and a sandwich or muffin or something on that order. What is the topic, uh, you know, of, of Dr. Farkas's... Uh, she'll, she'll be talking heart health prevention, and um, I, I don't imagine she'll get too much into treatment unless there's specific questions, but it'll be mostly in, in how we can better ourselves and how we should be aware of our numbers and those kinds of things. So uh, um, I think the nice thing is that people will have access to a cardiologist and be able to ask her questions that they might have. So do you think that you're talking um, for this primarily prevention or people who are recovering uh, from a heart attack or, or have heart disease will also benefit? Oh, you bet. You bet. Anybody that uh, is concerned about heart. We have to realize that heart is the number one cause of death for men and women in the United States. And I think we need to be more aware of that. We get so focused on, on other things being uh, more prominent, but they're really not. The bottom line is we, we don't talk about heart health enough and we don't deal with it mm -hmm. in our own lives. Uh, I know that there's always uh not necessarily conflicting information, but there's almost an overload of information. I think people have a tough time deciding which direction to go. Uh, for example, the, the 2010 uh, nutrition guidelines just came out now, and people are looking at it, and there are, there are some differences from, right. you know, 2009 and, and, oh my, from, you know, 1990 or 1980, whenever they first came out. A lot think, of changes. I think the uh, president's wife has had some uh, influence on making it more of a, a national issue That's of, true. of looking at obesity as being a, a cause of a lot of illnesses and heart health is, is one of them. Okay, heart starting, disease. starting in the schools too. Exactly. Uh, you know, where heart disease starts in, in grade school. It doesn't start as, as we're aging. It, it has been there for a long time. Yeah. It's it's kind of a you know it's a, it's kind of a tough economy to t to tell people to be buying you know fresh vegetables and fresh fruit when a box of macaroni and cheese you know for less than a buck will you know this, so that is a real struggle and a conflict for people. It is, and yet I think it'll maybe be a little impetus for us to grow our own vegetables. Not those of us that live in the rural area have a have a very big. Um, opportunity to grow our own vegetables and to be able to eat those during the winter time and to can again sure getting back to the basics that we used to have years ago yeah so now will do will um will dr farkas also uh, focus a little bit uh, on nutrition and and or will this be more symptomatic and and uh, you know i think she's a pretty broad uh educator and i've listened to her before as a parish nurse we we had a um a seminar with her, and she's excellent as far as answering questions. She oh, has a nice, uh, uh, a nice, well-rounded attitude, and and being a female probably has an advantage there too. To have be, to feel because accessible because they, they know about the foods and so they know about February, more things. Yeah. So February twelfth, and we're talking uh, ten to twelve. Lunch is served here at the United Methodist Church in Purim. Judy, give us a phone number. Three four six seven four two zero. 
If you'd like to pre-register, we'd love to know how many are coming for lunch. So that would be very important. Very good. Thanks much for being with us. Thank you. And stick with us. We're going to be coming right back from Calvary Lutheran. Welcome back to the Purim Show. We are here at Calvary Lutheran in Purim, and my guests are Tamara Langan and Pastor Phil Holton. And we're going to talk today about a very, very important and, and special effort uh, called Feed My Starving Children. So thank you both for being being with us on the Purim Show. Tamara, I'd like to start with you. Um, can you give our viewers some background information? What is Feed My Starving Children? Well, Feed My Starving Children is a Christian organization based out of the Twin Cities. Um, and they basically gather funds and have volunteers pack meals that they send to over 66 countries nationwide. Um, our event here in Perm that we're hoping to pack meals for is we're going to target it to Haiti. So oh, all okay. of our meals here are going to go to Haiti. Now, you, you guys have done this once before. I remember having people on talking about Feed My Starving Children. Um, a, a couple, was it a couple of years ago already? 2009. Okay. So, yep. At that time, we had hoped to pack over 300,000 meals. And in fact, the people were so generous and so excited about the project that we ended up packing over 435,000 meals. So, wow. That's amazing. Um, what is your goal this year? Our goal this year is very ambitious. We're hoping with God's help, we can pack over a million meals. Wow, that is ambitious. So what will a million meals mean to, what is, why don't you explain what you've got here? Well, this is what the packet looks like for Feed My Starving Children. And basically this was designed by Minnesota Food Science scientists. And it contains uh, chicken, rice, soy, veggies, vitamins and minerals. And this packet is enough for six meals. Wow. So I don't know about you, but... Um, I usually eat a little bit more than that in six meals. Right. But these kids are starving. So yeah. this is good nutrition that we're hoping to give to them. So um, this is, this, this is a, how, many, how many days worth of food then? Or how many families worth of food would be? <laughs> well, a lot of times it's one meal per day per person. Okay. Um, so wow. that's what it is. Yeah, and, and you have, I'll hold this. <laughs> sure. Um, with the meals, you know, we've... Locked in at 19 cents per meal, so a million meals, we're hoping to raise $190,000 um, to be able to pack those meals. And we're going to do what's called a Highway 10 pack-off. Okay. Um, so we are, we're obviously this time with way more meals, we need way, way more volunteers. Last time we had over 3,000 volunteers. This time we're hoping to find over 5,000 volunteers to help us out. Um, so we're going up and down Highway 10. Um, but what we discovered is um, this was very important for the school kids to help us pack. And so we're going to have kind of a pack-off between the juniors and seniors from New York Mills, all of Perm, and Frazee, and possibly Battle Lake as well. So. Well, I can see those million meals happening. Oh, I yeah. really, I really can see that. Um, Pastor Phil, I'm going to turn to you and, mm -hmm. and ask you, um, what, what are the next steps then for our viewers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, if, if, uh, if you'd like to participate, um, we're, we'd be very excited to, um, to have you contact us. Um, you could call Tamara Langan at Langan Chiropractic. You could call me at Calvary Lutheran Church in Purim. Um, we, um, what we would need you to do is um, to help us out. We need some money. We need sixty to seventy-five thousand dollars so the school kids can pack. So this is really about kids feeding, reaching out to kids. So I love that it not only um, feeds kids overseas, but it teaches our kids that they can do something about this. To me, that's just so key. Mm -hmm. And so we need some money to help the school kids do it, and then we need teams. Okay. So we will have lots and lots of teams of 15 to 20 people who would bring $1,000, and, and they, in a two-hour shift, can pack enough food for 14 people for a year. Wow. Yes. 5,000 meals. 5,000 meals. So, um, you know, teams, 1,000 people, $1,000, 15 to 20 people, or money for the school kids. That's okay. particularly what we need. So you're looking at the business community, you're looking at uh, the faith community, you're yep. looking at um, service organizations. Service clubs, and, individuals, and, and they, are, they are being so responsive already. You've got some really nice gifts coming down the coming down through, and uh, we will love to hear from you. Give us a phone number for the church. Uh, okay. 
Um, three four six four seven eight zero. Very good. And in the final seconds for the Langen Family Chiropractic. Three four six seven four six three. Very good. Thank you both so much for being yeah. with us on the Purim Show. And you heard it here, pitching and help. Thanks for tuning in.